Hello and welcome once again. My name is Natty Cash, and we are back again with part 10 of our NCAA uh, basketball imperialism save. If uh, you haven't seen any of the videos previously, please make sure to visit the link for the part 1 video in the description below. And uh, we're going to get ourselves going. One team at a time, we're going to eventually eliminate this down till there's one college program left. Let's head to our wheel. So let's take a spin. Let's see what we can do with this here. Where are we starting off today? Looks like we're heading out west as we're going to watch UNLV in action. And what direction are they going to try to uh, attack first? Looks like they're going to try to go out west. Which means UNLV here is going to take on uh, the Bakersfield Roadrunners. And even though it was a pretty tightly contested uh, game here, back and forth, many lead changes, it was UNLV that was able to pull it over the line at the last moments to get their victory. And with that, UNLV takes a nice big chunk of California, creating a big battle for uh, different red colors that are happening here, but UNLV's got a nice central location to all of them. But back to the board again to the wheel and let's see where we're headed off next. Looks like we're in a similar area as we're gonna see Weber State in action. Weber State get their first chance to act in this uh, video seeing them try to go to the southwest where southwest from their logo means they're gonna hit um, Utah, University of Utah right here. And in an upset fashion, Weber State takes home the victory. Utah was leading for a good part of the first half, but Weber State took the lead in the second half and gets their first chance to conquer. And with that, Weber State gets to conquer a nice big chunk of land, and they now have a significant part of the state of Utah and a little bit into Nevada as well. But back to the wheel we go. Are we going to stay in the west coast or are we going to head somewhere else? Looks like we're staying on the west coast as we see Long Beach State. And let's see what direction they're going to travel in. Looks like they're going to go due east. And we're going to say due east is going to take on UC Irvine. And it is UC Irvine that picks up the win. It was a close game till later in the second half where UC Irvine put on the pressure and made it a comfortable win in the end. And with that, UC Irvine gets their first piece of land, removing Long Beach from the board. But we're back to this, the wheel once more. Let's see where we're going next. Looks like we're now heading out east as we're going to find North Carolina Central. They have expanded once before, but let's see where they're going to try to expand next. Looks like they're going to try to go due east which means the Eagles are going to take on the NC State Wolfpack to try to expand even further. And it is the Eagles that do get the win. A close battle back and forth with a few lead changes, especially in the second half. But it is the Eagles that come up top with a three-point victory. And with that, North Carolina Central now have a nice big chunk of land as they've now expanded all the way to the East Coast. But back to the wheel we go to see where we're headed off to next. Looks like we're going to go a little bit further north and see Navy in action. And we'll see what direction they go. I know that they've expanded a fair bit in the area, but they're going to head to the southwest. Which, uh, based on their logo, is pretty close, but I think it points towards George Mason. Um, they're going to take on and potentially get a nice big piece of land. But on second thought, George Mason has something to say about that, as they trounce Navy pretty handily in the end. There's not really a scenario where George Mason was falling behind at any point in that game. Huge win for them and their first chance to expand. And George Mason has now taken a significant part of Maryland and uh, has really surrounded many of the universities in the Washington area. But back to the wheel we go. Let's see where we're headed now. 
Uh, looks like we're going to go um, to the center of the country where we're going to see Kansas State in action. Let's see, this is their first chance of trying to expand. Looks like they're going to go a little bit to the north, uh, more so the northeast. Which means north, northeast means they're going to take on Nebraska. And Kansas State does take the victory. They never were... Uh, they never were behind at any point, but Nebraska did make it interesting to close the gap for a bit, but Kansas State gets their first chance to expand. And with that, Kansas State gets their first expansion into the state of Nebraska, leaving them as only one of three programs to occupy the state of Nebraska. But let's spin the wheel again. Let's see where we're headed now. Looks like we're going... Uh, out uh, to Lipscomb. Now for Lipscomb, this arrow can point many different directions, but this is the one direction where they're going to avoid Vanderbilt, because going south means that they're going to take on UAB instead of taking on Vanderbilt. But it is Lipscomb once again that uh, get to conquer one more time. A close match, lots of lead changes throughout, but Lipscomb in the second half were able to maintain that lead and get the victory. And like that, Lipscomb expand further into Alabama, creating again a weird border here where Vanderbilt is still kind of around the edges waiting to pounce. But back to the wheel again, let's see where we're headed off to next. Looks like we're going up northeast, so we're finding Boston University. Now this will be their first time to expand, as they're going to try to go to the west, a little bit to the southwest. Which means the Terriers that are right here are going to have to take on Yukon. And unfortunately for the Terriers, they were not uh, a good matchup against Yukon. Yukon was losing for parts of the first half, but then they got things into gear and made a comfortable win in the end. And even though that isn't much for UConn to take over, still means that they get to control their part of the map. But back to the wheel we go, let's see where we're headed off to next. Looks like we're getting to go to Texas. As the Roadrunners are going to try to conquer, looks like they're going to go straight north which for the Roadrunners going straight north means they're going to take on the behemoth that is Texas Tech. And it is the Red Raiders that take the victory once again. At the end, Texas Tech was leading most of the way through, so it's a comfortable victory for them. And with that, Texas Tech once again take a piece of land that belongs to the state. And now they've got a pretty good piece here basically all of western Texas. But we go again, we take a spin, see where we're headed off to next. It looks like we're gonna go see the Missouri State Bears. They will get their first chance to expand as they're gonna try to go to the northeast, which means northeast is gonna take them against the Missouri Tigers. And it is the Tigers that get the best of the Bears here um, at the end, it wasn't much of a contest, as they get a comfortable 21-point lead. And with that, the Tigers expand once again, now taking a nice piece of their own state, creating a nice big piece in the middle of Missouri. But we go back to the spinner as we keep on going in this, this uh, video. Let's see where we're headed. We're headed back to North Carolina, as we're going to see the Spartans in action. And let's see what direction they want to try to expand, as they're going to head off to the west, which means they have to go up against Wake Forest. And it is Wake Forest that do get the victory. It was a pretty close game in the first half, but Wake Forest was able to pull away and get the victory in the end. And with that, Wake Forest expand once again, now taking a nice big chunk of North Carolina battling with some of these big uh, big schools in the state. But let's see where we're off to next to see who's going to get a chance to expand. It looks like we're heading up to see Maine in action. 
Now Maine is kind of in an interesting position because the only place that they can expand to is in this direction. So they're going to take on UMass Lowell. We don't even have to spin the arrow. And it is the River Hawks that get the victory pretty comfortable in the end as they soar for um, their chance to conquer a big piece of land. And just like that, all of Maine is united under one program, and that program is UMass Lowell. But back to the wheel we go. See where we're headed off to next. Looks like we're going back to North Carolina as we're going to see UNC Wilmington in, in uh, action as well. And let's see what direction they're going to try to expand in. Looks like they're going to go straight west which means they're going to expand and try to take on the Tar Heels of North Carolina. And it is the Tar Heels that get the victory once again. Unfortunately for Wilmington, they were just not competitive um, as UNC strode forward to the victory. And it is the Tar Heels that have now taken a nice piece of southeastern North Carolina and now there's not, you know, they're going to be bordered by a fair few uh, programs now. We'll see when they get to face Duke or South Carolina or Wake Forest, right? There's very few programs that are left that are going to start challenging them. Moving forward, let's see where we're off to next. Looks like we're going to head out west as we're going to see Oregon State in action. This will be their first chance to expand as they're going to try to go. Uh, we'll spin that again because that's pushing out west. We'll spin one more time here to see. Hopefully, we can get an action here. Looks like we're going to the northeast, which means that Oregon State are going to take on Portland State. And it is Portland State once again that is going to get their chance to expand. Close game in the first half, but Portland State were able to pull ahead and retain the victory. And with that, Portland State expand once again, taking more of the state of Oregon, leaving only about three teams left that actually occupy the state of Oregon itself. But let's spin the wheel again. Let's see where we're off to. Looks like this time we're going back to the northeast as Yukon are now going to be in action once again. And which direction is Yukon going to try to expand in? Looks like they're going up to the northeast. Uh, northwest, which means that Connecticut are going to take on UMass in order to expand further north. And it is once again UConn that gets the victory. Although it started to be close in the first half, Connecticut was able to take uh, the victory pretty easily in the end. And UConn once again get to expand as they've now taken a big chunk of Massachusetts and they've even expanded into Vermont and New Hampshire as well. But let's head back to the spinner here. Let's see where we're off to next. Looks like we're gonna head over and see Monmouth in action for the first time. And let's see where they're gonna go. They cannot go due east because they're on the coast so we're just gonna spin that one more time. And let's see we're gonna go north from where they are now. And uh, north from where they are means that they're going to go straight up and take on the Terriers of St. Francis, Brooklyn. And in a very close contested battle with Monmouth normally well, leading the whole way, St. Francis does end up getting the victory in the end with the last minute bucket and holding off Monmouth to the end. So St. Francis gets a chance to expand pretty drastically. And with that, St. Francis from Brooklyn gets to expand pretty significantly and now has a huge chunk of land compared to what they had before. But let's head back to the wheel to see where we're headed off to next. Looks like we're headed out west as we're going to see Colorado State in action. Now Colorado State's land is pretty big, so let's see where we're going to expand. Looks like we're going up north which means that Colorado State are going to take on the North Dakota Fighting Hawks. And it is Colorado State that get the victory. There was a most of the first half North Dakota was actually leading, but Colorado State was able to gain the lead back in the second half and secure the victory. 
and with that Colorado State now has complete control over both South and North Dakota and has expanded into Minnesota even further. But back to the wheel we go once again. Let's see where we're headed. Looks like we're now heading over to see Old Dominion in action once again. Now since Old Dominion is out on the coast, we cannot go directly east, but going west certainly will work. And Old Dominion going directly west means that they're going to take on William and Mary. And it is Old Dominion that get the victory. There was a point in time where they had a big lead. William and Mary came back to try to make it interesting, but Old Dominion did secure the win in the end. And with that, Old Dominion now has expanded pretty significantly into the state of Virginia, uh, creating a nice piece of land for themselves. And we're back to the wheel. Let's spin around to see where we're off to next. It looks like we're going back to the northeast as Bryant are going to be in action once again. And let's see what direction they're going to try to expand. As they're going to try to go to the west, which means for them they're going to then take on Yukon as well to try to maybe stop their expansion. Unfortunately though, that Bryant does not have the enough power to take on Yukon and defeat them as Yukon stroll to a pretty comfortable victory. And Yukon now has expanded further into Massachusetts and has taken a portion of Rhode Island as well. But we keep rolling here to see where we're going to go to next. And it looks like we're headed to St. Louis. And let's see which direction that St. Louis will try to expand again. Looks like they're going uh, directly east, which means they're going to take on southern Indiana. And St. Louis were able to take on the, the victory here. They were leading most of the way, although southern Indiana brought it pretty close at halftime. Uh, but St. Louis was able to take the victory. And St. Louis has now expanded even further into the east as they stretch now into Indiana and a little bit into Kentucky as well. But back to the wheel we go. Where are we off to next? It looks like we're headed off to Georgia to see the Bulldogs in action. And let's see which direction they're going to expand. They have expanded once before. They're going to now head to the southwest. And based on the map, it's really close on whether they're, they would face Georgia Southern or Georgia State. But it just points towards this county here. So Georgia is going to take on Georgia State. And it is Georgia State that takes the victory pretty handily as they never re really losing in uh, this matchup. So they get their first chance to expand. And with that, Georgia State gets to expand further east, expanding getting a nice chunk of Georgia and also pushing into South Carolina as well. And let's head back to the wheel to see where we're headed off to next. Looks like we're staying in a similar area as the Crimson Tide are in action once again. And let's see which direction they're going to try to expand this time. Looks like they're headed off to the northwest, which means Alabama are going to take on Vanderbilt to create potentially one of the weirdest borders we'll have so far. And it is Alabama that takes the victory. Uh, there are a couple times where Vanderbilt tried to make it close, but Alabama takes the victory in the end. And with that, Vanderbilt is gone, which has now created Alabama's borders to be one of the most chaotic borders that I have seen thus far. But back to the wheel we go. Let's see where we're headed off to next. Who's going to get their chance to expand? Well, it's going to be Georgia Tech that get a chance to expand. And what direction are the Yellow Jackets going to try to go first? They're going to go to the north, or sorry, southwest, which means they're going to try to go up against the newly expanded Georgia State. And it is Georgia State once again that get the victory. Close game in the first half, but it is Georgia State that uh, walks away with a pretty comfortable victory. And with that, Georgia State expands even further, again, eliminating opposition in their home state. But we are back again to the wheel, maybe just for one more time. 
to see where Colgate is going to try to expand. Let's see what direction they're going to try to go into. Looks like they're going to try to go north and a little bit to the east, which means going that little bit east means they're going to take on the Albany Great Danes. And it is Colgate that does get the victory. In the end, they made it pretty comfortable and get their first chance to expand. And Colgate then gets a nice big chunk of upstate New York and gets to be a decent sized player in the state. And with that, that's the, our video for today. Again, looking at the maps, there's pieces of it that are slowly changing and evolving. Things like Yukon and Colgate in the east, North uh, Carolina Central as well, and then you've got big Texas Tech starting to expand, Weber State with the nice upset, and uh, any of the other changes that happen throughout this video. So. Once again, I want to thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you like the content, um, and we will see you again another time. Peace.